Hi, this is Tim from CCTV Design. I just wanted to give you a quick run through how I moved a live website back to a production website because I want to do some major changes that I didn't want to do online and I'd never worked with a production site before. Um, so I had some troubles finding the details. I eventually did, but I changed how I did it. So I thought I'd take you through that. So first of all, I'll open up my website. So I'm using PHP My Admin to look at the website contents. And all we've got to do here is go to the Export tab. Don't change anything, just click the Go button. And what will happen is we'll end up with an exported copy of that file, which I'm using Chrome, it just auto-downloads into My Downloads. So here's my downloaded file. So it basically just comes up as a SQL extension and I'm going to open that up using Notepad Plus. I'll give you the link to Notepad Plus in the, the notes at the bottom. So the next step from inside Notepad Plus is we want to find all of the instances of my main site's URL which would be cctvdesign.com.au so what I'm going to do in here is a simple find and replace. So we go for that one and we basically type in http colon cctv design oops, design .com .au, and we want to replace that with the local host um, and in my case it'll be cctv design for the folder. Be nice if I could spell tonight. So we do a replace all and what that will do is go through the entire database, find all of the instances which there's probably a few thousand um, and it will replace them with what we needed. So there we go, 24,000 replaced and all I've got to do then is save that. I'm just going to save a copy of you don't have to, but just just show you what's going on here. And then from there, we'll move over to our, our new database, uh, import it using again my uh, PHP my admin. So I've opened up a local host copy of PHP my admin. And we're going to be using that to create a new database. So we'll go over here and create database. And we'll call it CCTV Design. Um, create. I'll go through and create passwords and users for this, which I'll do offline. So I've just created my user and we'll go into the database and we'll see there's a database with no tables. So we now want to import the file that we created before. Now I had a little problem here where my file is quite large, it's 84 meg I believe, and you can't physically import that. So what I need to do here is add a, a modification to the My PHP Admin. So I'll just bring that up. So I found this tutorial which tells you how to get around the file restrictions and I'll put the link again into this site but basically we'll get this error if we just try to upload it the normal way because it's too big. So we need to go through into our folder so I am using Winamp, um, modify the config inc file which I've opened up here again in notepad and I've scrolled down to find the area they've told us to look for upload directory so we just name a directory and I'll call that upload and save the file so basically same thing they've said to do there and all we do is we place our SQL file into this folder so if I go into my upload folder
So I have to create a folder in here. So I'm in my PHP my admin. Call it upload. Copy my data. Sorry, my SQL file into there. I think if I just F5 this, it should come up. Um, okay, so we've now got this drop down, and I can select my file from there. Down the bottom, we just click go, don't change anything else. It'll go through, do its processes, which can take several minutes. Um, and then we'll be ready to open the website in the new local server. So there we are. Okay, and now because of a typing mistake I made earlier, it took me a little bit of time to get it going, but we've basically got it to a point that using NetBeans and WAMP, we can run the database run the, um, the website and that will pop up and here we have my website running on local host hopefully completely functional, well not quite but a little bit of work I'll get through and get that all working so a few seconds further on what the problem was was I'd rename my plugins file so we're just naming that back and once that's done, everything will be up and working.